Hello, welcome to chapter 5, section 2, where we're going to discuss using intercepts, the second part of understanding linear functions. So what do I mean by an intercept? Well, to intercept means to cross something, to come in contact with it, to um, cross paths. So we use the word intercept in algebra for where our graph, which is the red line right here, is going to come in contact with either the x-axis or the y-axis. When we show you the table, excuse me, the graph, all that you have to do is tell me what the value is for um, that, that is crossing on the number line. Okay? So, and, and see the x-axis? That's just a number line. And I don't have all the numbers marked, but this is 1, 2, that'd be 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. Sometimes it'll, it may even cross in between those. Okay? Same thing with the y-axis. It's just a number line. It's just going vertical instead of horizontal. One thing I want to point out is this, and this is really important. All right? So for the x-intercept, and remember this, that's going to be on the x-axis right here for this problem and right here for that problem. This is where the y value of the graph equals zero. So this point right here is on the x-axis, y goes up, and, it, and what, what, sorry, when y is positive it goes up, and when y is negative it goes down, but here it's not going up or down, so that's where y equals zero. For the y-intercept, this is where the x equals zero. So like the y-intercept is right here on the y-axis. If I went to the right, x would increase, and if I went to the left, x would decrease. x would be positive, x would be negative. But right here on the axis, x equals zero. So one thing that I'm going to be looking at for to find the x and y-intercepts is where the other one equals zero, okay? For the graphs, this is actually kind of easy. The symbol for the x-intercept, we use A. For the y-intercept, we use B. I know, it's really, really creative. So for this problem, A for the x-intercept is right here at negative 4. I'll put a little dot there, even though there already is a red dot there. And the y-intercept is right here at negative 3. And that's all that you got to do for that. Seeing it with the graph is like the easiest thing in the world. For this one, with the for the other um, linear function, the x-intercept is right here at negative 2 and the y-intercept is right here at 3. So take a moment to pause and look at that. That's all that you have to do when you see it as a graph. But of course there's going to be more than just that. We're also going to do it when we have an equation. So both of these equations are written in standard form. Something times x plus something times y equals something. And to find the intercepts, we're going to do this thing right here. So I'm, and it doesn't matter what order you do it in. You know, if I if I say let's find the x-intercept and you find the y-intercept first, it doesn't matter. We're going to get both of them, and it'll be okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say let the y equal zero. So I'm going to take this linear equation, this linear function, and write three x subtract two y equals twelve and I'm going to replace the y with a value of 0. So I get 3x subtract 2 times 0 equals 12. Alright, so what is 2 times 0? That'd be 0. I'm going to write it out. Normally I'd probably talk about it in class, but I'm actually going to write out all the steps so you can see it for the students who like, you know, like to look at the slides. So this is going to be 3x subtract 0 equals 12. 
and subtracting zero doesn't do anything, so I just get 3x equals 12. Since I'm multiplying x by 3 to get x alone, I'm going to divide by 3. And when you divide by 3, I'm going to use a fraction like that. We're not going to use, I'm going to put this over here. Do not use this symbol right here. Don't use that. I know you've seen that before, your teachers have used that before, but um, in advanced math we want to avoid that. To be honest, there's only one place where I kind of need to use it and it's in Algebra 2 and something really complicated. But don't worry about that. Right now we're not going to use that. We're going to use fractions instead. 12 divided by 3 equals 4, so I get x equals 4. That is my x-intercept, so now I know that my x-intercept is 4. So that's one of them. But now I gotta find the, the other one. So I'm going to let x equal zero, and I'm gonna find the y-intercept. So again, I've got three x subtract two y equals 12. If I do three times zero, subtract two y, that's gonna equal 12. So I know three times zero is zero, and I just get negative two y equals 12. Divide by negative 2, and I get y equals negative 6, so that tells me that my y-intercept is negative 6. Now, don't panic about the fact that I'm switching letters, all right? If I replace the y with 0, I get x equals 4. This tells me that I have the y-intercept. Remember, the name of the, excuse me, the x-intercept, the name of the x-intercept is a. It's not a very exciting name. The name of the y-intercept is B. That's all that I'm saying. It's just saving me some time. I could also write the x-intercept is 4 and the y-intercept is negative 6. But I'm lazy, so I'm just going to write A equals 4 and B equals negative 6, as long as you and I know what that means. Let's do this problem. Same thing as I did over here. I'm going to let y equal 0. So negative 3x plus 5y equals 30. I'm going to replace that y with 0. Negative 3x plus 5 times 0 equals 30. All right, so 5 times 0 is 0. Negative 3x plus 0 is just negative 3x. And my pacing as I do these problems all by myself, recording it, is usually going to be off a little bit because I know that in class I'm usually looking at my students, seeing if they're keeping up, seeing if they're nodding, seeing if they're writing, that kind of stuff. Okay, usually I would even tell you to work on this with your partner and then I'll go over it. All right, so if I go too fast, please pause it and rewind it. Do what you need to do. Say, hey, what do you say? Rewind it. It's okay. Go back a little bit. You, you, can, you can do that. All right, so I, I was thinking to myself, I'm going a little bit too fast, and so that's why I wanted to stop and say that if I do go too fast. All right, moving on. The opposite of multiplying by negative 3 is divide by negative 3, and I get x equals negative 10. So my x-intercept, which is named a, is negative 10. To get the y-intercept, I'm going to let the x equal 0. So the thing is, is that to find the x, y equals 0. To find the y, x equals 0. It's where it crosses the x and y axis and the other one equals 0. Okay, so that's that helps you out with that. I get negative 3 times 0 plus 5y equals 30. 5y equals 30. Divide by 5 and I get y equals 6. So my y-intercept is 6. Now, we're going to be doing more of these type of problems in, different, in the videos coming up because the next step after this is to actually graph the line using the x and y-intercepts. So if you can do all this, the next step would be to actually draw the line. And that will be coming up in one of the other examples.